Everybody, let me shut this off. <clears throat> How are you doing out there? Welcome to another live stream coming to you directly from <clears throat> Atascadero, California, where I guess in Spanish means mud hole. And I'll tell you what, it's been raining so much that it's absolutely true. So, as you can tell, I have an issue with my guitar strap. Sometimes it likes me, sometimes it don't. And it just comes undone. And it did that in the first measure. Now that, 
That was called Beautiful Love, which I've played before. It's a great little tune, man. And um, it's on the library if you're interested. Uh, if I was to play it... Mm -hmm. Gotta play the last chord, don't I? Anyway, it's something like that. <clears throat> so anyway, Wes is here with us today. Say hi, Wes. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Good <laughs> afternoon. Good evening. Yeah. Hope you're all having a great day. It's going to be a fun morning. It is. It is. We have a lot of things in store, which... I don't know what it is right now. Gail's working the message board there. Say hi, Gail. All right. <clears throat> anyway, by the way, we're showcasing this guitar. But before we get started with all that, Wes, shall we do what we're going to talk about today? You don't have to ask me to do it. You can just do it, you know. Yeah, but you're the producer, man. Well, of course I want to then, yeah, with some, yeah. Oh, all right, all right, all right. So, <clears throat> what we're going to talk about is this guitar. Do other people on other shows ask their producer before they do something? I don't well, really. Sure. I don't hear that often. On Johnny shows. Carson no. was hey. always asking Freddie Cordova, "Hey, you know, should we do this now?" Do you know how many episodes of Johnny Carson show I've seen? Zero. Well, zero show. You should. You so. should. You, you've got 30 years that you can go back and look at. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to feature this guitar and this guitar up here. I just picked it up. See that? X-150. Guild X-150. And uh, we're going to compare this to the 68L5. Everybody get a drink. Just a little too much bourbon in this. Oh, sorry. Oh, just kidding. Um, so, um, we're, and now I've, I've got a bunch of guitars listed on the website. We'll talk about some of those. And, of course, it's getting close to Valentine's Day, so we'll have to play my funny Valentine. And as I'm going through my A's, they're... You know, we just hit the B's, so I still got to do Affirmation, Autumn Leaves, and then I'm going to go Bebop Deluxe, which is a recording that I did. And then uh, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about tetrachord fingerings then. And, you know, I always, not I always, but of late... I've discovered we're teaching the wrong way to play scales, well, especially to beginners. So uh, who is we? Standard guitar teachers, you know. Got it. Guitar teachers, yeah, teaching the wrong way. I think wrong way to to show them how to play scales. All right. So um, anyway, so where do you want to start, Wes? Why don't you see who's here? All right. Um, that a boy, Wes. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Richard Bishop uh, is here. He said, if that floater, Diarmin, has just the right resonance, it might be magic sounding. It does sound pretty magic, for sure. I, I, I like the sound of it. Definitely nice and warm. Mm -hmm. uh, Gordon's here from Birmingham. Danielle 
already asking about my funny Valentine. So there you go, Danielle. Will be this week. Uh, Marvin <laughs> Forte. The email reminders for these live sessions really helped me out. Glad to hear that because, yeah, I sent out a lot of them today. Uh, Big Steve from Olympia, Washington. Good Big morning. Steve. Big Steve. Joel Henderson here. Joel, what's happening, man? And WC Ray, Mark Larkins. Mark. John Burkhart over in South Dakota. Sweet. Kim Mickelson is here. Blues Bone, which is Clay. Hey, Clay. Kirby. Clay? What's Kirby. up? What's up, Kirby? Hopefully you're not flooded away down there. And uh, Andrew from New Jersey. Al's here. Said swing, Rich, swing. There you go. Hmm. Um, Rob's here. What's going on, Rob? Rob's, Rob, Rob's getting up? the commercials. I, I dialed back the setting. I don't know. Huh. It's kind of locking us in here, this new thing. Uh, Tom Colhane. What's up, Tom? How's it going, buddy? He's over in Connecticut. Uh, Salvador Tenorio. How's it going? Paul P. Man is here. Love that. P. Man. <laughs> P. Man. That, that's my nickname. Seth Waddington's here. Uh, he's in North Dakota, right? Or is he south? I can't remember. He's a new jazz uh, guitar accelerator student. Uh, All right. Nice welcome. Player. And then uh, um, Slacker Deluxe. I like, well, I like love, love that name. That should be your name. <laughs> um, I got two words for you, and it's not happy birthday. And then uh, Bruce uh, is up in Washington. Uh, he said... Uh, Sorry I snuck up on you at the OC Fairgrounds Guitar Show. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Bruce. Yeah, you snuck up on me. Scared me, man. Jeez. That, who is this guy? Bruce, you're like bad underwear. It's right up on you there. Jeez. Um, so, okay. Um... <laughs> um Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to our live stream. And by the way, if you're not here, we won't be here either because it's no fun to do it by ourselves. So make sure you post questions and all that good stuff. Um, real quick before we, we, you know, three weeks away is the guitar. Three weeks from tomorrow is oh my the gosh. guitar festival. We got to get our stuff together. I mean, I've... It's together. We're right on track, man. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I don't know about you. I just have to keep yelling at you to do stuff. But hey, that's I guess my job now. So. What? Um, yeah. <laughs> Asks, you know, trying to figure out a sound guy, and then who comes to the rescue? Me. Yeah, yeah. Just with me, you nagging me. That's all. You just nag me. Because we need a sound guy. Otherwise, all this stuff is not gonna happen and yeah it's a rough rough life over here but yeah jazzguitarfest.com for uh tickets and um will yeah. early bird pricing's over but uh we still got a way for you to save money here uh, live stream viewers we're doing this specially for you uh type in wow. promo code late discount and you'll get 50 bucks off wow off the whole weekend. Off the whole weekend. Yep, it's uh, two hundred seventy-five bucks. So we'll drop it down to two twenty-five for you. Wow. And that includes all the concerts, all the classes, the exhibit room, and the whole entire hang. It's going to be great. Yeah, it'll be it'll be a blast. So yeah. again, yeah, late discount. $50 off. Remember that. Write that down. Go to jazzguitarfest.com and get your tickets. Before it's too late, it's going to be fun. <laughs> Good. I, I see Seth is here doing his homework while watching the live stream. Hey, Seth. Uh, so, yeah, um, Clay, you're, you're coming to the festival too, aren't you? So we got Kirby's coming and uh, uh, Jim Rolfe and uh, Rob Briggs is coming. Uh Okay, so 
You got to stop reading that stuff. So anyway, um, let's get into this guitar. Let me see. <laughs> now, this is really exciting. This is next level, guys. <laughs> if I had the money, I'd buy that guild over a Gibson L5. There's a reason that Johnny Smith loved his guild. My old teacher played one. Got to hear an artist award in person to get it. So uh, what what is the story with that? Is did Johnny Smith play an artist award? Yeah, and uh, you know he ended up, you, you know, jumping ship from Gibson to Guild. I don't know why. And then I was looking around, poking around on online, and um, all the ones when you type in Guild Johnny Smith, they all say Guild Benedetto. Johnny right. Smith. Did they like? team up for that or i i don't really know that because the uh i don't know if johnny you know it's johnny smith's specs but i don't know if he was around when bob was making those guitars so bob benedetto wonderful luthier so what can you put those somewhere else and put them right over the mixing board okay just throw them on the ground. Well, no, I read this stuff, man. This is important. <laughs> you stuff. don't know how to read. You know, you better have a little definitely, respect for your father. Definitely don't know how to spell. I brought you in this world, and I can take you out mm -hmm. and make a new one just like you. Yeah, you hurt yourself doing that. <laughs> That's a, a Bill Cosby saying. Ah, too bad about him, huh? You know... Just Paul, the disciple, said, end well. And he, Bill Cosby, didn't end very well. Hey, so check this thing out. See this thing here? Well, this is a heat warmer. It, you put it in a your hand, hand. Hand warmer. Hand warmer, yeah. Put it in your hand, and it, it's, it gets super hot. You know what happens with me? My index finger if it's cold my index finger goes numb so it was like it now it's finally warming up but anyway these things are great Gail got them for me off, off of Amazon and so you can put them in your pocket you know and stuff like that and put your hand in there or in between tunes if you're playing outside and your, your hands are freezing or I just you know if it's cold man I, I gotta have this so it's really cool. I wanted to show it to you. And it's USB charged kind of thing. So anyway, a little info on that. I'm glad you, you probably wanted to hear that. Shall we do my, let's do my funny Valentine. Let's get it out of the way. It's a wonderful little tune. And by the way, this track is pre band in a box. So it's a bass and drums and it's a drum machine and me playing bass. On oh, the, these ones on are my keyboard. favorite. They have all the funky sounds in them. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll be playing some of your favorites. That's that's for sure. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, that heat warmer. It's really well, nice. Hand warmer. Hand warmer. Hand heat generator hand warmer. It's a heat warmer. You know, my favorite person in the world is... The comedian Norm Crosby. Love that guy. Here we go.
There it is. Got it out of the way. My funny Valentine. Thank you. Yeah. Then I don't care for that song. I, I don't know why. I just don't think. Ah, uh, whatever. There, there it is. Huh. Jim Rolf says I have a Johnny Smith Guild with a Benedetto specs here in my room. It's never been played out. Perfect condition. My friend Larry Thomas owns it and wants to sell it. It's amazing in my opinion. So, yeah, Jim, I, I wish we could, I could have seen that thing. Um, yeah, so Larry Thomas ran um, Fender, right? He ran part of Fender or all of it, I don't know, as well as uh, part of, uh, he was the president of uh, Guitar Center. He's got about 5,000 guitars. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, I guess a real nice guy and a pedal steel player. And who was I talking to at a show about him? Oh, Drew. Drew, one of the Burst Brother guys that goes out and buys all the, used to buy all the vintage stuff for uh, Guitar Center. Now he does it for himself. And he was also... This particular fella is also, uh, his uncle was Les Paul, something like that. Crazy. Little information. Gail put a, a link to the hand warmers, the heat warmers, in uh, the description under the song lesson links. Yeah, I'll drop it in the chat too right now. Okay, good. There you go. Bingo. Available at Amazon. You're welcome, Amazon. Like, they need help, right? Everything. It's so easy to buy from Amazon. Saves you so much time, doesn't it? But I... And money, too. They, you know, you can always find something cheaper there. It right. Like. And, but what gets me, how can you return... I mean, uh, how, the free shipping. That's, that's what gets me. Free shipping all the time. Well, and... You, what you you have to pay for a membership though to get free shipping well okay you got to pay for membership yeah that's four, 15 bucks a month okay you know you do save money on it but yeah but yeah it's not like it's totally free okay all right but it's pretty close to free meanwhile um just to send, you know, little things in, in our post office now. It's so expensive. Like a pack of strings, you know, six bucks or something. Crazy. All right, enough of my ranting. <clears throat> so, Wes, you know what? We were at the guitar show, and... Greg at came up to me and he said remember this and this is a Strum and Comfort he has uh, the Strum and Comfort um, picks 
thumb picks that are pretty neat. And he said, we had put together this. You remember doing this? Yeah. With uh, all with our video magazines. Remember? Mm -hmm. I remember. <clears throat> so, yeah. Well, a long time ago, before YouTube, believe it or not, there was, uh, we, we used to do a video magazine. And on that magazine, we would feature interviews and lessons and all that good stuff. Um, like here's, here's Tom Bresh on here. We did an interview with Tom Bresh and stuff. So anyway, Wes put all this stuff together. Remember we had bought that, what was that thing called? The Casablanca? Yeah, just like a standalone editing box thing. That was, that right. thing was cool. Right, Sta yeah. And so. I pushed that thing to its limit, man. I know, I know. I, I went to a video class at the high school because I knew we went, needed to get into doing videos. And they just recommended buying this thing. So we just bought it. Like, here's one with Bobby Broom. We did an interview with Bobby in Chicago. On the streets of Chicago one time. Yeah, that was fun. Wasn't that fun? Yeah, absolutely. Here we did this one with Jay Roberts. And here's one with Phil Keggy. So anyway, Wes hit and Doyle died. That, that one with Phil Keggy uh, won an award from the Casablanca Company. That's right. And yeah. then you went, you as an award, you got to go back to... Uh, Boulder, Colorado, to their headquarters and do like a class and yeah. stuff. You won a bunch of free software. and I won that twice, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's here's one with Ted Green. These are all on YouTube now, I believe. Most of them, anyway. Yeah, that one with Ted Green. That was, so that's a tribute to him. That, uh, was that was after he died. Right after he passed and away. And yeah. we interviewed a bunch of people at Paisano's <clears throat> Guitar Night. Right? Wasn't yeah. That it? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Here's the guitar night. It's it's great. It was that that turned out great. It uh that that was the other one that won the award. Um, the Ted Green. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because everyone was emotional and there was just really great sound bites and I interweaved it with a bunch of him playing and stuff. It was that took a lot of work. Oh yeah, that yeah. Was a, that was an editing job right there. But uh, <laughs> it was pretty good. We need to re-upload that. Um, T Ted Green thing sometime. Yeah, because the quality on that, you know, we put it up when uh, people were on dial-up. <laughs> Things have changed a little since then. Unbelievable how fast technology changes nowadays. But anyway, that's where Wes uh, cut his teeth. Do we, How long ago do you think that was? Is there a copyright on here? Yeah, I don't know, probably 2003 maybe, something like that. 2000. Yeah, you're right. Three. Yeah. 2004. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we did it for a few years. It came out every uh, three months, and you subscribed for it, and then you got this in the mail. Well, when YouTube came around, it was end of story. So we ended up putting all those things on YouTube, and... Uh, then that kind of helped us. But anyway, that's where Wes got his start. And after that, <clears throat> you went to uh, Reno, right? Because your Natalie, your sister, moved there. Yeah, I moved to Reno and got a job with uh, the CBS affiliate there, which launched my <laughs> career as a TV newscast producer for the next 15 years. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you started off as the gopher, right? Uh, my job, my first job was to move this camera like one inch <laughs> every like 20 minutes. That's what I would do. I'd take this camera, move it over like an inch to yeah. the other person. And that was it. Every 20 minutes. And then you'd sit there and wait 20 more minutes and just literally do nothing. And yeah. I was just like, then after that, I moved up to the audio board and did audio for the newscasts and so i was doing all production but then i was like how do i 
don't want to do this anymore. I want to write. I wanted to write. The right. News. Well, that, you became the writer then. Yeah. So, news at 11. So, yeah, I uh, would go in early and shadow the producers and watch them do their thing and then let the get them come on can i please write one story please let me just write one story and then they're <laughs> pretty soon they were like hey wes we got stuff you want to write it and then like yeah. yeah definitely and they're like sweet because i don't want to do it yeah so uh so yeah that was it but he won an emmy there yeah i won, crazy huh i won two emmys uh yeah, I won one in Reno, and I won one <laughs> in San Francisco, which the, yeah. the San Francisco one was a big, big deal. Yeah, well, that's a major station. Yeah, and that was for best breaking news coverage, which that's like the best, the biggest news Emmy you can Oh, win. is it? Yeah, because, huh. yeah, so that was during the George Floyd riots, and there was, we had all our reporters in San Jose and there was a big line of SWAT cops and protesters uh -huh, and then right. all of a sudden they were like standing off and then all of a sudden they just all started fighting and we were live on it. Oh wow. And uh it was like an intense three hours of like rioting and people breaking into stores and nice. It was it was intense. It was really compelling news coverage for sure. Huh. But, so, anyway. Wow. So that's the... And now, look at him now. I know. Now look at me. <laughs> I'm here in this little shed. <laughs> like, with three feet of space. And, yeah. Yeah. Well... Uh, well, I will you're say... You're an independent now. You're yeah, independent. Freelance. I'm a freelance. Freelancer. But, you know, this... Uh, working for you guys i'm this is definitely the first event that i've kind of organized and put together and that's true done all the marketing for and doing all kinds of stuff for this thing so yeah i was just thinking last night too it's like we should put together a checklist of all the things that we had to do for this guitar festival and i was like oh my gosh, that checklist would have like 300 things on it. <laughs> yeah. Take, take you a few hours just to make yeah. the checklist. Yeah. I mean, crazy. Just going from... But then like, you got it for next year if they do it next year. From like just the very beginning would design that logo or come oh, up yeah. with the name. Then oh, design yeah. the logo. Then build the website and build all the pages on the website. It was just like, wow. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it is a lot of work, a lot of work. But it'll come to a head pretty soon, and then it'll all be over with. And then I am going to take some days off right after that. Yeah. I actually want to take the next following days off after the Guitar Fest and fast for three days. That's okay. what I really want to do. Really? Huh. Yeah. I'd like to go to Hawaii. But that ain't going to happen. <laughs> We're going to go to uh, Temecula. Oh, that's the next best thing to Hawaii. <laughs> Everyone wants to go to It's, it's going to be fun to get with Gail's family. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's kind of Wes's career there. And, and now he's into a new thing with this guitar fest. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. So anyway... Well, that and then the, you know, we, I put together the whole uh, accelerator program That's true. as well, too. So, at, speaking of that, you know, we, speaking of the accelerator. we are looking for three more people to join the accelerator. Oh, yeah. Uh, we just got a new person last night, which is great. Denny, it's going to be a good addition. But, uh, but yeah, if you're interested in, getting customized lessons twice per week over zoom in a structured thing you'll never have to worry about what to practice and you'll watch yourself get better very very quickly which is why we call it the accelerator i need to get like a um 
engine revving, rev, revving sound bite on here. Yeah, vroom, <laughs> that's jazz right. Jazz guitar accelerator. Yeah. Vroom, vroom. Or it should be maybe the Flintstones. The yeah, whatever. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, I could get out my hot rod and do that, man, for you. Yeah. We but, could make a sound bite. But anyway, yeah, you. Uh, the the program has been super successful. Uh, if the fastest way to get anywhere and like like you said what kind of things are you seeing guys learn you know like are you seeing just you know these click you know switch moments where like oh yeah finally i understand the fretboard or you know every student's different which is what's cool about the program is we, we cater to your skill level so you got some really good guys and you got some intermediate guys you guys got you got some guys that are somewhat in the beginning stages of jazz yeah they're all over the map and so um i don't think um i mean there's been a few aha moments but really it's learning some of the stuff um that they never learned before you know how to approach the neck like a piano as opposed to a bunch of boxes you know so um box shapes you know what i mean so um it's that kind of thing so yeah anyway. and then also too you always say that um what is it that you always say uh, uh, i always say uh i'm hungry what do i oh say? that you you know you people are learning stuff they don't necessarily need to learn yeah and, you, you know, know like when i look back on what i did um I, you know, seems to me I spent a lot of time doing stuff that I don't think I needed to do. So um, we kind of cut out the fat, you know, um, like getting people to understand and hear altered sounds right from the get go, I think is so important or the stack force sounds, those kind of sounds as opposed to just that traditional harmony and stuff. So um so yeah, and then new chord voicings, even making up your own, you know. So I think that is that is important. So it's one of those things that this is what you also say is like just get it over with, you know. That's true. Yeah. So you can use it, get it over with, have some fun and 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 play with it. You know, I got I get guys writing their own solos, which is um basically what you kind of do when you improvise. Except you, when you write it out, you're doing it much slower. <laughs> but the first time you do it, it takes a couple of days. Then the next time, take a few hours. Next time you do it, it, you can whip it out in 20 minutes, you know. So, and there, I even, I encourage them to, to do it without the guitar. In other words, you're writing uh, using your theory, your uh yeah, using some theory knowledge, you know, and uh, whatever you do to manipulate a line to make it sound a little more interesting. So, um, anyway. So, yeah, if uh, you're interested in uh, joining up, you just go to jazzguitaraccelerator.com, click on the discovery call, and then uh, this little handy-dandy calendar pops up. And then you pick the time and date, and we'll sit down and chat with you about it, see if you're uh, a good fit, and um, go from there. Yep. As easy as that. Easy. As easy, easy as one, two, three. One, two, three. Do, re, mi. I will put the uh, link one, in the two, uh, chat here for you guys. Yeah, good. Oh. Yeah. So um, there is some. Uh, other comments here that I wanted to get to. Uh, Gut picking cow hippie. This is a great, great name. Um, get no get picking cow hippie, not gut picking. Get picking. Unseasonally warm Wyoming. He said, oh, which oh, is awesome. Cool. He's been. I've been playing a A one fifty for the past month. Truly digging it. The exact oh, yeah. tone I was looking for in an affordable guitar. Affordability being a legitimate concern for we starving musician types. So that that A150 has the same t sort of pickup as that that thing, right? I rem we did a 
Yeah. We did a review on one we did. over a year ago. I'm going to be getting one in, too. Yeah, those were cool. And plus, yeah, like you said, they were pretty pretty inexpensive, you know. Right. Nice guitar. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Pick and Stone says, Guilds have that sparkle at the top of the tonal spectrum that is often lacking in Gibsons. I don't know why, but they just shimmer and sing over the range of the instruments. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And then um, Seth Waddington said he just bought a Guild Benedetto Artist Award. Yeah. He said Bob Benedetto ran the Guild Custom Shop briefly. He did work with Johnny Smith, who signed a very small number of those guitars on the back of the peg head. Okay, that's good. Awesome. Well, that's nice to know. Thank you, Seth. Yeah. And uh, so, Jim, did the, is yours signed by Johnny Smith, the one that you have at your house now? Just curious. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, okay, now what? Um, <laughs> Gary... Uh, Gary Salima gave me a, hey, Gary. a tip. Thanks, Gary. I appreciate oh, that. Man, that guy is always a great giving guy. me tips. Yeah. He's, he's awesome. It'll he's over guy. in Italy. He's a jazz guitar accelerator student as well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can do it from anywhere. He's doing it from Italy. So no matter where you're at around the world, you got another guy, Tilo, in Cambodia. Um, yeah, most guys. Trip? Most guys are in the U.S., but hey, it's we not... had Francis. Francis was in Switzerland, right. I think. Or so it's not limited to uh, to uh, anywhere. So um, yeah. So yeah. Um, and then uh, James McNamara said, "Hi guys, uh, will there be a merch table at the festival? Can I get my Bruce Foreman book autographed?" Yes, sir. Yeah. You definitely can. The Book of Foreman. Yeah, so we're going to have little tables set up for all the artists who are going to have uh, some books and CDs and things like that. And uh, you know what? We need to. They'll be, they'll be hanging around their tables and right. you, you'll see them walking around. You know, they're, they're, on, they're only going to be busy really during the concerts and for their hour a day when they do their class. So they're going to be hanging out. Get lunch with them. Yeah, buy them dinner. Take them to dinner. Um, yeah, so yeah, they're very accessible. Wow, here's a great comment right here uh, from Ko. Wes has won all kinds of awards. Wow, who knew? Is he single? Asking for a friend. <laughs> there you go, Wes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you've had several girlfriends, but nothing stuck, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Um, K.O. being my new girlfriend. So, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> K.O. What is, what is her name? K.O. <laughs> nice. Co. Uh, her name's Christy. Hi, Christy. Thanks oh, for like tuning that. in. I like that. Mm-hmm. Nice. Well, um, we've been married for a long time. 50 some odd years. Crazy, huh? Okay. Um, any thoughts for playing Fly Me to the Moon? Um, yeah, you're using the stack force for that. You know, I have this arrangement where I have a walking bass. <laughs> Christy must be a knockout. K.O. <laughs> yep. Way to go, Joe. Joe, I don't have don't have that Johnny Smith uh, yet. Uh, I sent it to a, uh, a friend who's working on it, and I'm, I am going to get it back soon. So I know I said I'd have it 
here today, but it didn't work out. So tomorrow, next week. Yeah, we'll next week we're on the feature. Right? So Wes, can you kill the overhead mic? I mean, yeah. because this thing is so... Uh, What are you going to play? Affirmation.
Ta-da! Yeah, that thing's sounding pretty sweet. Yeah? Yeah, I, I like it. Definitely. Cool. Mm hmm It, um, yeah. All right, let's talk about this thing. Why not, huh? I know. Yeah. We, let's get into it. Okay, so here we are. It's got, number one, it's the flagship of Guild, okay? So, solid woods all around. Beautiful binding, gold hardware, ebony fretboard, and look at this headstock. It's got a headstock. Let's take this off. Bruce Foreman would not like that. Beautiful, oversized headstock. That's a gorgeous guitar. And um, those inlays are intense too they they are you know and and then but you know what these same inlays are on cheaper guitars um that guild makes so i don't know what the deal is whether one is actual ab abalone and the other's just plastic or whatever but um wc ray was asking what year that thing is it's a 1984 is that what yeah 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 um, by the way, um, you can, uh, I'll put the link to the, uh, for sale page so you can go check out the, all the photos. Yeah. And you know what, Wes, you got to check it out because I look at how bitching those photos are. Yeah. The, right. I mean, they're bright. They're not all like, <laughs> yeah, because I, no, no it, I shut the light off. I didn't use that. No, you did not. I did. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. So anyway, yeah, you can go see the uh, see a bunch more photos of this thing and and stuff here. I'll put the link in there. Yeah, let's take a look at the back of the neck. Notice how it's got the stringer between the uh, the two stringers actually, and then so it's a one, two, three, four, five piece neck. This is guitar is in pretty dang good shape for being that old. And so I'm thinking, Wes, don't you agree that I probably ought to keep this and then we'll sell something else? Uh, I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. Um, <clears throat> I've always liked these. You know, I was going to install a tone control on it just because, but um, I don't know. Never play an E chord on a jazz guitar. It's like, it's a dead giveaway that you're an idiot. I, I shouldn't say that. Easy now, jeez. I mean, you, you don't go. That's what I would be doing. I know, I know. I risk uh, my So case. you're calling me an idiot. Well, you gotta play some jazz chords. It's a jazz guitar. You know, you gotta play some... Anyway, my only beef, I don't like the 
as most people know, I don't like that thing there. Um, <clears throat> so I was thinking about installing a tone control on this, and I believe the I don't know if anybody else out there listen to this. I feel like the top string needs to be a little louder, and I can't seem to get that screw up. So I'm going to lift this side of the the pickup up a little bit somehow, or maybe lower this side a little bit too. So. I mean, it's just really got. Yes, Don, you're right. Except if you're Elvis and you can play anything you want. <laughs> so, yeah, I shouldn't have said that on an E chord. Can you kill the overhead? Sure. Okay, thank you, Wes. Yeah, so... Um... <laughs> One of my favorite things is when you say, kill the overhead mic, and then you start talking. It's <laughs> classic. Well, I'm talking, yeah, it's, yeah, 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 it's true. <laughs> Fingers are uh, play that thing acoustically though for a second. Okay. Gosh, even, um, you know, that thing sounds a lot brighter acoustically. Yeah, it is pretty bright, huh? Yeah, compared to the, some of those Gibsons. Yeah. It's loud. It is loud, yeah. <clears throat> but it's really bright. Well, like I said, it's built with a lot of care. So what is the uh, the body depth of that? 17. Mm -hmm. And it looks like three and a half here. Right. And then, uh, how about the scale length? 25 and a half. And then nut width? 111. Uh, this is one, and that's a good question, Les. Because Joel says uh, he and a pal ordered two artist awards in 78-ish, both beautiful, one natural, one sunburn, both with the d and pickup. The nut width, he thinks, was one and five-eighths. Hmm. Huh. This looks like three quarters. 
one and three quarters. That's what it's looking like to me, Joel. Huh. Really? And you you said one and five eighths in the seventies. You know they might have done that. Yeah, which I like. I like that scale length. I like. Uh, I mean, I'm not with. I like that size. I like it a little closer. I guess I don't have to stretch as far. Wow, you should have kept those, Joel. Yeah, gorgeous, but too well, what skinny. What about um, Al's? <clears throat> Al is asking about the neck profile. What's that like? Well, this is pretty much like a. Uh, oh, I would say a cross between a C and a D. It's kind of neither one. Um, it's not. There's no real flat spot there, uh, so it's it's more of a C, but it's not half a half a baseball bat, you know, so uh, it's a thinner neck, which I like. I like a thinner neck. So I, the, the guitar is real sweet. Very sweet. Yes, sir. You betcha. Yeah, you betcha. So, I don't know. <clears throat> How does it... The frets, to me, guild frets, which, by the way, we got a we got to check this thing out pretty soon. Uh, gilt frets are a little thinner, you know, the little thinner fret, a little lower, maybe just a hair. You know, it's such a, um, <clears throat> I don't remember, you know, in my youth being so picky about guitars. Um, but now that I'm older, I guess, and, and just weaker, the uh man it's got to be just perfect or it's it's like i get stuff to play i think you reach a standard and, and you always want to achieve that standard and if you can't do it you you blame it on the instrument <laughs> or or you just or it's true you know so uh anyway so yeah this artist award I've wanted one of these for a long, long time and finally was able to get one. And uh, I don't know, it's tough. Tough to let go of things like this. Shall we compare it now to the L5? Uh, sure, let's play. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. Oh. We gotta, we gotta what? do. You gotta do something to like have context. I see. So you want me to play a tune? Yeah, play something, and then we'll play this the same thing on the other one. You don't have to play the whole song either. Just play like the head. Let's hear a snippet of it, and then swap it out real quick. Okay, in my and especially the head too, because you play the sol different solos. So I feel like if you just play the head. It's pretty close to the same thing on both, you know, both tries. Right. Okay, all right. I'm going to play Autumn Leaves because it's part of the A's and we never played it last week. Yeah, A-U, getting towards the end. A-U <laughs> or P-U?
Brandon says um, <laughs> it would look better with the L5 tailpiece. The harp, sh the harp shape looks like a five-year-old designed it. <laughs> I mean, I would have to agree that that is kind of a weird. I'm not in love with the tailpiece either. It just looks kind of funny. You don't think that this tailpiece has something to do with the sound? Oh, I'm sure it does. Think about it. I mean, because listen how resonant this... You hit this thing, this thing is ringing. Look at that. Can you hear that, Wes? Oh, yeah. So, you know, that harp configuration maybe is actually serving a purpose. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? I bet it is. Um, Let's compare and contrast. Let's hit this thing. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, it seems like that could be a source of the brightness. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This sounds like a drum, then a low pitched yeah. drum. Yeah, and that other thing was bright. It's like ding, ding. Yeah, isn't that weird? So I mean, I'm sure that's has to do with uh has to do with the brightness of the guitar because i bet you this thing's gonna be a bit darker danielle says that uh that tailpiece shouts guild yes shout yes Whoop, whoop hold on hold on here yeah hold on this you know this is You should speed up the video now. God dang this thing. <laughs> just just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing great. <laughs> God. What? <laughs> You know, have you guys seen the newer Three Stooges movie? I, that that movie cracks me up, man. And those guys did such a great job on that movie. I mean, I love that movie. I took my grandkids to see it when they were young. And Gail asked him, well, was it funny? And he says, yeah, it was funny, but we didn't laugh. So what does that mean? <clears throat> yeah, um, W.C. Ray said, "Aren't the guilds being abed?" Um, yeah, we'll 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 bust out the other guild and then we'll go back. We'll circle back to the artist award. <laughs> okay. How's that sound? Beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. Okay, maybe I ought to get a, maybe I ought to get strap locks. You know, I don't like those, but because you get, you know, I got so many guitars, you know. Though. All right, let's compare. Yeah, you know what we need to do because everyone always asks about your straps, including um, mm -hmm. Clay, and he says you need to start selling your line of straps. We should talk to. Uh, bill about uh, at least put the link to the strap in the description of the video these videos yeah you know, yeah so that way people can just click on it and buy one well you know we need to talk to him because he's he's uh he's still working on this strap because he said the thing is there's no way to adjust it you know so uh i don't know so we'll talk to him at the fest he'll be at the fest Okay, you ready? Yep. Here it comes. Or not. Let me see.
What do you think? Um, I I I'd have to say I like the Guild sound better. I think, to be honest, it's more character. God, it does have more character, doesn't it? Yeah, and it still has that really warm sound, but it just has. I think what you know, um, Gitman said earlier, uh, or Git picking cow hippie said uh, <laughs> that it has just a like a little sparkle on it. On it, you know, it's like that Gibson sound mm-hmm. it still has that high end, real like nice guitar, jazz guitar sound, expensive, right. warm, but there's something extra. There's something, so maybe you should keep it. Yeah, thank you. And sell that L5. <laughs> Since you you do, or, or the other one, sell the other L5. Why don't I just sell some of these other guitars I got? Yeah, that, do that too. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Boil it down. We got to boil it down. You know, to the you know a good solid forty guitars. Mark Larkin uh, says the Gibson L5 is still finer sounding, a finer sounding instrument. Uh, not to mention the L5 retains its value. The L5 has a certain sound richness. Yeah, now this is the a 68 L5. And, uh, you know, remember I, I took the... Took the... Uh, pick up off right you know and this is there's no pick up there um so it it it, it does make it a little more acoustic mm-hmm. but anyway that pickup and the combination of that uh, guild and that pickup is pretty sweet pretty sweet so shall we now listen to the other guild uh, yeah, I mean, you don't have to play that same song on it again. Let's just check it out. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Clay likes the L5. Uh, the separation of notes was better and the warm tone. Mm. I, I, I think that the, uh, L, the, L, the uh, octaves sound better on the L5. Yeah, it's got that's a little more impact or something. Yeah, or... just or it's they're a little the uh guild they're a little uh I don't even know the word, but they're just a little cutty. Cutty, yeah, a little little yeah. too much high end. Yeah, they just kinda like Well you know, see, that's why I wanted to put a tone control on that thing. Uh because remember, this is we're just going wide open, you know, in the here. Everything's flat, right? Oh no, things are boosted. Things are boosted on there. A little well, bit. just the mid is boosted a little bit. Oh yeah, and the low end. Well, we'll keep it the same for now. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Now, this is really exciting. This is next level, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, I just got this at a music store locally, right? We were out promoting our our jazz uh, fest, and I saw this in there, and I thought, good grief, that is the, one of the nicest-looking guitars. Now, I put on the description... Oh, crap. I put on the description that, that it's... Um, I couldn't tell if it's 90... Seven or 2007, uh, the Guild dating numbers um, <clears throat> didn't seem to work. It, the way the numbers were for this model, it, it almost made it look like they only made five of them in 95, and that can't be right. Um, I'll put the, uh, you can check out the guitar picks of this, this uh, Guild. X-150, is that what it is? Yeah. So, by the way, you know, I have to have the action so dang low. Yeah, the, uh, the, D, the uh, B string on here 
not as cut too low. What do you do? What? How do you? Uh, what what we do is uh, we have to use a little bit of uh, gl super glue and baking powder or uh, baking soda, and you, you build it up and then recut it. Huh. All right, so here it is. Um, here you go. That thing sounds great. Yeah, plays great too. Yeah. So it's in beautiful shape. Let's, let's uh, take a look at it real quick. So how With how spy how big is that? Uh, three and a half, sixteen inch. It's just like a one seventy five laminate maple, uh, mahogany neck. It's got a, a strap button that didn't want to come off. I replaced that, by the way. Because the chrome on it is so pretty. I mean, it's really, really nice. Um, there are no dings really to speak of on this guitar. It spent its life in the case. And uh, 
Look at the neck back here. It's pretty. So a three-piece mahogany neck. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Isn't that pretty? Although it's I I it's weird seeing the darker. Oh, you know, the, that two colors. Yeah. Yeah, it gets a little. I don't mind it. I I think it's cool. So I, all the a lot of old blonde Gibsons were like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, and uh, there's pictures on. This is also on the uh, on the web page, and I had got it at a pretty good price, and I'm offering it up at a pretty good price. Yeah, it's a great deal, <clears throat> for sure. I put the link uh, in the chat. Um, you yeah. can't beat this that guitar for that deal. It's no, not made in the USA. So, gee, you know, what do you want? Yeah, especially if you're looking for, you know, like, you know, Clay was saying, uh, you know, a uh, lower priced arch top. That thing is, I don't know if it gets much better than that. And it still has that guild sparkle. Hit that, uh, hit that tailpiece. So it's a little lower pitched in that than, than the other one. It's got a... And it, it plays a note. Yeah. Uh, huh. What note is that? F. Perfect jazz guitar. Interesting. Plays a tritone. Yeah, so that that's pretty cool. So let's play a tune on it, sure. shall we? Yeah. What, single note. So this is a tune called Bebop Deluxe. One of my creations. Have you moved into the B section now? We're into the Bs. All right. Okay. Two weeks in the A's, now we're in the Bs. Here it comes. <laughs>
Okay, there it is. There it is. Measure the nut width. Okie dokie. What's the uh, scale length on that? 24 and 3 quarters. Gibson scale, or whatever you want to call it. So this is one on the 11 sixteenths, I'm pretty sure. I'll have to bring my micrometer out here all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not one and three quarters, that's for sure. So zoom in on this tape. I, I am. Oh, you are. You're, there's no way you're going to see that. Okay. Yeah, it's one and eleven sixteenths. Just let me double check. Yes, 11 sixteenths. You're welcome. <clears throat> yeah, the, that, that guild is a, a... Yeah, these things sound great, man. You know, I was in Phoenix, um, or no, we were on vacation. Where, where were we at? Over there, kind of, not by Phoenix, up by the Grand Canyon. Um, and um, I heard a guy playing in a jewelry store. We were walking around, and I could hear this guy playing. And uh, he's playing some nice jazz chords. And I poked my head in there, and I said, man, that sounds good. That guitar sounds good. He's playing exactly one of these. And it's funny. He, he, he said, I know who you are. I bought this guitar because I saw you do a demo on one of these. <laughs> I thought, wow, that's cool. So anyway, um, yeah, so X, you know, these are hard to find sometimes with the one pickup. Uh, the X170s, uh, they made a, lo a lot of the those, you know, that, that was a nice guitar. The X150 has got a little something special. So let's take a grand tour of this neck because I do want to show that there is where the binding you know, there's tiny little, a couple of little splits in the binding. I'm just, I don't know where they are, but it, you can see them there. You can't. You can't I really mean, see them. Yeah, it's tough. You know, like there's one there. so fine. Actually, there's only one. One right, right there, right where the dot is. You know, so um, that could be a humidity issue that would happen, but I doubt it. It just binding shrinks after a while. Binding shrinkage. There's shrinking. You know, we all know about shrinkage. So Wes, you got any? No, I do not. Oh, but could you tell him about Mitch? <clears throat> um. Okay. Mitch. So Mitch uh, Holder was uh, going to be a guy, uh, one of the teachers and performers at the Jazz Guitar Fest, um, but he had a little mishap and he is unable to make it out to the to the Jazz Guitar Fest. So in his place we got. Da -da 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 -da. Jim Fox. Jim Fox is uh, going to take over for Mitch now um, at the Jazz Guitar Fest. I know a lot of you guys know who Jim Fox is. Um, apparently he played, uh, he's played all over, but he's uh, one of those big things in his career was that he played for Frank Sinatra's son, uh, for a little while and um, but yeah I think he's down in LA he's an LA guy and uh, Jay's a great player great teacher and uh, been doing it for a very very long time so he's got quite a lot of experience um, I don't know much else to add what what else can we add about Jim Fox well number one he's um, really into arch 
top guitars and uh, um, he I can't you know he's a perfect guy to have there uh, there is a one particular builder that is from Australia that he really really likes and uh, so he's gonna have some guitars there but he is so really good at well <laughs> playing the guitar <laughs> because you know you want to say well you know he can play he does really great rhythm playing he does I mean really good rhythm playing and um, and a good single note playing too so geez you know I mean he's all around guy and a great reader he's um did you tell him who he's played with? Uh, just what Frank Sinatra's son, right? Well, yeah, but I mean. Uh, no, that's all I remembered. Oh gosh, yeah, he's got a he's got uh, quite a quite a list of people he's played with. It, I thought we posted it, but anyway, it yeah, tons of people he's played with, famous. So. Um, Oh, did we want to revisit the, um, I feel like we're wine tasting. Would you like to revisit the Zinfandel? Well, yes, I would. I would like to revisit the Zin and the Pinot, and uh, we might as well do revisit the Cab, too. Let's just revisit it. The list. You guys, have you ever been wine tasting? It's it's quite a quite a fun time. Bring out all these wines and then they say tell you all about them, what they're supposed to taste like. This has essence with a essence of leather with a little bit of gravel in it, and uh, it's got a fruity beginning with a vinegar finish that's my joke uh oh did you see that Wes yeah what does that mean I don't know your stream deck wants to access files on your removable volume Boy, that does sound like an arch top, doesn't it? Hit that, uh, hit the, the, the tail again. Because uh, Al was saying that it might be that, that one is forged and the other one is cast. note is that oh, that's a D flat I thought I thought we were getting an F out of there earlier yeah we were <sighs> so play that bebop deluxe there before you fall asleep on that and let's see how they compare or at least just the... oh, okay okay kid could you yeah you're gonna kill the overhead yeah Kill it. Kill. Okay, here we go.
That's, really oh, wow. Yeah. oh wow. Okay. Oh wow. That thing sounds smoother, <clears throat> definitely, than the uh, that X150. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Not by much, but plus it's just a different sound because of the pickup, I think, right? Yeah, pickup, yeah. Everything matters on a guitar, everything. What about the L5? Throw that away? Yeah, yeah, you give it to me and I'll sell it. No. Yeah. 50 bucks. Uh, I mean, that's what I'm going to do when, you know, you give me all those guitars when you pass away. It's, it's no, I, I'm going to sell them before. Estate sale style. No. I'm going to sell them. And me and your mother are going to go take a trip around the world. Right. You're not getting anything from me. <laughs> Just what I expect. <laughs> you, know, you know what I got from uh, my mom? What? I got a TV. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Sweet. Actually, I got. She did a. Here's what she did. She didn't have any. Well, she had, I think, a thousand dollars at something life insurance. She got a new credit card before she was going in for this operation, and she went out and bought some gold. She bought TVs. She bought a bunch of stuff, and on the credit card was Credit Life. So she she racked up the card with five thousand dollars. And then she didn't come out of the hospital. So that was her way of leaving something behind. Did she buy all the jewelry on QVC? Yeah, she bought a bunch of that stuff too, yeah. That was like her favorite. Oh yeah, she loved she loved QVC. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I finally had that this, you know, it would the telephone wouldn't dial that number anymore. I had to mix the numbers up or something. The X150 cuts through better. This one, perhaps, better as a solo guitar. Yeah, I could see that for sure. It mm -hmm. definitely felt like it blended in there quite a bit to that mix, um, as whereas the other one was like really in your face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is this? You should write a new song called Summer Sommelier Blues. Mm -hmm. You don't know what a sommelier is? No. Oh my God. How can you call yourself a wino if you're not, you don't know what a sommelier is? What is it? Sommelier is like the expert wine person at a restaurant that comes over and talks to you about which wines are going to be, oh. you know, best with your meal. And I see. You, yeah, that's like a wine expert at a restaurant. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, See how high class you are? You must I'm be gonna a raise a fuss, I'm gonna raise a dog. Working all summer just to try to earn a dog. And I hope you're not playing an open E chord on that. Well, I bought my papa, and he said, quote, I'd like to help you, son, but you're too young to vote. And times I wonder. I'm gonna do Cause there ain't no cure For the summertime blues Oh God, please no! No! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, you're funny. I think we fulfilled... Oh, should we do a lesson? Sure. Okay. All right, here's what I... I talked about this before about fingering a scale. And um, um, Rob says that's weird. All right. Um, here's the deal. You know what a tetrachord is, Wes? You don't know what a tetrachord is and you, you're my son? I do not. I do not play tetrachords. A tetrachord is the first four notes of a scale. Okay, a scale is made up of two tetrachords. One there and then one a whole step away. So, you see this fingering for the first tetrachord? The second tetrachord. So we really should be teaching 
a young person how to play a scale that way. So here's the first tetrachord. Now I start here with this. And then, of course, because of the B string, I have to change my fingering. So, when a young somebody... So, when we think about it that way, there's only one fingering to play, the, except for the B string one, to play one scale. When I play this a scale this way, here's a different fingering for a tetrachord. And then it's transferred over here to the same fingering. But then here we are back again with the other fingering. So I've got this tetrachord fingering, this tetrachord fingering, this tetrachord fingering, and back to our first. So we actually are playing two different fingerings of a tetrachord. When we could show just how to play a tetrachord. Like that. Does that make sense? Um, is Amy watching? Oh, hi, Amy. And Kylo, hi, Kylo. And Kason, that's great grandkids. Wes, say hi to them in the middle of our lesson. Yeah, this is great TV. <laughs> Some hey award winning stuff. Hey guys. They don't even they don't even, they call me Corey anyway. <laughs> That's right. It's Corey. <laughs> All right, so now look at if we really wanted to, to learn a tetra chord and stick with this fingering, we would play it like this. That's the same fingering. That's, that would be the same tetrachord fingering. Does that make sense to you guys? So, a question about when, when we teach somebody how to play a scale, whether we're doing a, a kind of a disservice without first showing them that it's the same fingering. All you gotta do is move this finger around. And I'll tell you what, it happens a lot in it, if you think about it this way. Think about a tetrachord and how you could manipulate it into other scales. You know what I mean? A, C, uh, F sharp, D flat, G, or A flat, and you know you can you can go nuts with this stuff. Let's see if I went and then went down here. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, that's something to think about. You know, and the same thing transfers over like just, to, just even a blues scale. That's the fingering, you know, we teach like we teach guys to go like this. But 
but maybe we should be teaching them this. And taking that fingering and applying it to different chords. Anyway, there you go. You really are taking yourself. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> that smell. Oh, that would be me. I've been swimming in raw sewage. You get this stuff. How do you get this stuff from airplane? Is it online or something? <clears throat> that one's from uh, Naked Gun. Oh, well. <clears throat> Gotta get your Leslie Nielsen films straight. Yeah, they're, you can literally find anything on YouTube. So we play some blues? Uh, sure. Or, or are we going to wrap this up? Play, play some blues. <clears throat> you gotta live the blues to play the blues. Now this is really exciting. This is next level, guys. <laughs> oh, that's fast. Let's let's slow it down a little.
I think it's about that time. I want to thank you guys for joining us. I hope you had a good time. Wait, there's one more quick question before you go. Uh, on the road again. Rich, if you could only have three arch tops, which ones would you have? Well, I sure like my Heritage Eagle Classic. And I do like my L4 on that 775. And... Uh, the L5 and then the Birdland. Um, That's like five and then guitars there. The artist. Just pick three. Three, okay. Like, you know, like, come on. Okay. All right, here we go. 775, L5, Heritage Golden Eagle. Huh. Got it. Wow. Okay. And Why then, the 775? Well, because it's, it's nice. <laughs> it sounds good. It's got, you know, it's got, um, It's even though it's laminate, it's got, it's just got a different sound, man. It's beautiful. Okay? Okay. All right, there you have it. <laughs> Don't forget uh, the Jazz Guitar Fest, uh, if you still want to go. No, it's still time. <clears throat> still time to get 50 bucks off, too. Plus, you can also just buy single night concert tickets as well. So if you want to just come to the concerts, 25 bucks will get you in. And yeah, and uh, there you yes. go. Yes, hope to see you there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Jazzguitarfest.com is the website to get uh, look at all the ticketing options. There's a bunch on there. But yeah, definitely then, show up three weeks away. Still got time to plan it out. Great location. Yeah, and then the guitars that we showcased today are on the website. And at, at guitarcollege.net. And we have the accelerator program and what else? My strings. If you want my strings, they're, they're also on that website. That's our sales pitches, right? Yeah. And that's about it. Nice. Valentine's Day, guys. Wait, gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneak in one more question. Okay. The pickup, uh, can that pickup be adjusted to under a harmonic spot? Well, no, um, this one can't. I mean, you can slide it here, but there's no room on the pick guard to be sliding it around. So, uh, what, what do you mean harmonic spot? You mean on the 12th fret, you know, like the 14th fret or the 24th fret? Is yeah, on that E you're playing. I, I, yeah, uh, the thing about it is, you know, if you, the harmonic spot, they used to say that it should be where the 24th fret is. But if you're playing in other keys and you're up here, it doesn't really matter where that pickup is. I think what matters, the harmonic spot changes. What matters is the distance between here and there. Got it. That's my two cents. All right. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you again. And, uh, gee, we'll see you next week, right? Yep. All with right. The, uh, hopefully with the Johnny Smith. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Happy Valentine's.